Hello there, I'm Dr. Ron Canoli, and welcome to the Academy of Praise and Worship. Today's teaching is called Beginning Your Music Ministry. I've been to a lot of places around the world doing teaching and doing praise and worship concerts or praise and worship events. And everywhere I go, young people ask me how they can get started in music ministry. So I have put together this teaching. It's called Beginning Your Music Ministry. And get ready, get your pencil, get your paper, get utensils ready, because here we go on Beginning Your Music Ministry. Today is beginning your music ministry, and what I'm going to give you is a blueprint for starting a Christian music ministry. Now, there are prerequisites. Let's go over some of those right now. You must have a strong and solid relationship with our Heavenly Father. No substitute for having a relationship with God. Have the endorsement of your pastor and your church leader. Because our Savior is coming back for a church. Remember, he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. He didn't say he was going to build your ministry. Your ministry should come out of your local church. And your pastor and the elders or leaders of your church should be able to give you a good endorsement. You need to be accountable to your spiritual leaders. All Christianity is about authority and submission. The Son submits to the Father. The Holy Spirit submits to the Son. The fivefold ministry, you have the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, and the preachers. And you should be accountable to one of your leaders. You must have a marketable skill or talent. Your skills and talents must be at least semi-professional. Have the support of your family because your family is your very first ministry. If you can't minister to them properly, don't expect that you'll be able to minister to the body of Christ properly. You must have quality and reliable equipment or instruments because you are only as good as your instrument. If you have a lousy guitar, you're going to sound lousy. So you need to get good equipment. These are the cornerstones for success and longevity in ministry. First of all, you must have a vision. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 says, write down the vision. So write down what you see in your mind when you are dreaming about ministry. Write down what you see and what you want to do. You must develop character. You must study. The Bible says studies to show yourself approved. There's going to be times when you have to sacrifice because everything worth having is worth sacrificing for. So if you want a good ministry, you want a successful ministry, you want a ministry with longevity, you're going to have to make sacrifices. So just be ready and prepared for that. And of course, Yeshua, Jesus, he made disciples. So that's the first thing that you need to understand is that you are a disciple of Christ. And that requires discipline. These are cornerstones for longevity and success in your ministry. So we're going to go over these things item by item as we progress. Be prepared for success. Success does not happen by accident. Know your instrument well. Make your instrument an extension of yourself. Learn the language of music. The military has their own language. The law enforcement have their own language. The medical profession, they have their own language. Every profession has its own language. And so does the community of musicians. We have our own language, so you should know and learn the language of music. Have a product to sell. Have something to leave with the people that you minister to. They're going to want to support you. You are going to leave something with them because out of sight is out of mind. And you want to keep yourself on their minds. Establish a range of mobility. How far can you travel away from your home base? 
you must determine how far you can go away from home and be back at your regular job if you're not in full-time ministry and you are likely not to start out in full-time ministry. Know how far you can go away from your home and be back to your job when you're supposed to be there ready and able to perform at 100%. Get a basic understanding of how to market yourself. How will you let people know that you have a ministry? Hey, you want people to know that you and your ministry exist. So you're going to have to know how to market yourself. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Are you passionate about a music ministry? Is the music ministry what you would do even if you didn't get paid? You, it has to be in your heart because sometimes you'll have to do things for nothing. What do you see yourself doing? You know, what are you dreaming about? What are your daydreams about? What do you think about when you don't have anything else to think about? And when you don't have anything else to think about, you should be thinking about your music career. That should be a passion. That should be a hunger inside of you. It's something that you will think about all the time. Does your character fit your dreams? Do you love people? Are you willing to lead people to Christ? Are you able to disciple others? Are you able to pray for other people? Are you punctual? Punctuality means a whole lot. You cannot show up late for your meetings and you, you can't show up unprepared for them. Are your health and your habits acceptable for what you want to do? Are you in good health? Do you have habits that are going to work against the success of your ministry? Do you have a positive attitude? Can you accept submission and correction? If you're just beginning, you're going to need to have an open mind because there are people who are in music ministry, people who are in the pulpit ministry, they will have suggestions for you and you need to have an open mind and receive. You have to be honest. You have to keep your word. You have to manage your time well and always show respect and always be thankful for everything that comes your way. Read materials that will help you progress. Online tutoring is a big help as well. Develop study habits that will ensure your desired results and commit to memory success philosophies. And here's one that I learned a long time ago. If you fail to plan, you have already planned to fail. These things will help you stay on course. Learn from people who have done what you're trying to do. In other words, get a mentor and practice, practice, practice. Find somebody who has done what you want to do and see if you can learn from them. Study to show yourself a brew. You need to have a good foundation in the scriptures. Learn the language of music. Learn the music industry standards and be willing to take lessons, to pay for them if you have to. Study the Bible. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All the desires of your heart. If you seek God first, he's already put that desire in you. He's already placed that passion in you to have a ministry, to go and to sing or to play. He's already put that in you. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Sacrifice. Remember, I talked about it a little while ago. Anything worth having is worth a sacrifice. Invest in your instrument. Invest in your voice. Get lessons if you have to. Learn how to take care of your voice. It is your instrument. A trumpet player can disassemble his trumpet and put oil in the valves and all of that and make it function properly. Well, your voice is just like an instrument. You have to learn how to take care of it. Be diligent in your practicing. Spend quality time practicing. Undisturbed time. Time that you will dedicate to your craft. Your appearance should match what you sound like, and that's very, very important. People will judge you by looking at you before you ever open your mouth to sing or play. Cancel negative people from your friend list. 
Listen, you don't need people around you telling you what you cannot do. The Bible says that you can do all things through Christ. Make adequate time to invest in your ministry. Be willing to invest time and money in your ministry. Be willing to put negative people out of your life. Be willing to eliminate distracting habits. And be willing to go to the place where your dream can become a reality. Be accountable to your local church. They need to know what you are doing. Every pastor or every sponsor is going to ask you, what church do you belong to? And they will probably try to get information from your pastor or from the leaders at your church. Pastors want you to be able to minister to their people. Self-control and mind control. Have positive thoughts and actions. Finish what you start. Schedule and commit time for your ministry and separate yourself from distractions. Once again, be willing to change your lifestyle to accommodate your dream. Discipline. Establish reachable goals. Prioritize your activities. Finish what you start. Be committed. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. James 4.10. Remember, only Jesus, only Yeshua is the star, and your job is to lift him up. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. That is the purpose for your ministry, is to draw people to Christ. Connect with someone who has done what you want to do, and let them mentor you. Be teachable, accept correction, be willing to pay for instructions if necessary. Just remember, you don't know everything. There's a lot of things that you need to know. Have an open mind. Abandon your ego. God is not looking for a star. Jesus is the only one. Now target your ministry because there's areas of Christian music. Worship leading, uh, musicianship, song leading, concert ministry, outreach ministry, inreach ministry, and songwriting. Let's talk about inreach ministry. Inreach ministry is reaching in to believers. More than ministry to God and about God. And the music is styled for the church. Dressed to minister to believers. Now there's outreach ministry. There's missionaries. There's ministry to the unsaved. You're going to sing about God. Okay, in other words, you're going to be sharing testimonies of what God has done in your life. We do a lot of things inside the church that unsaved people have no understanding of. So you're going to meet people where they are. You're going to sing songs about God and testify about what he's done in your life and other people's lives. And that way you will encourage them to want to know more about Christ. They will come to Christ. Music is styled to reach the world. Okay, you've got to give them something that they are familiar with. Not, and when I say familiar with, I'm talking about a style or a genre of music that they can identify with. And dress to reach them. Don't go out dressed like you're going to preach in the pulpit. Dress in a way that they will receive you. Be inspirational. Inspire people to have or increase their relationship with God. Be willing to pray with people. That's very important because everybody needs prayer, especially the unsaved. Be willing to share your testimony. Tell people what God has done in your life. It's going to help you persuade them to come to Christ. Be willing to pray the prayer of faith for salvation. Learn how to pray with people. And it doesn't have to be a super prayer. Just bring people to Christ. Introduce people to Christ, just like you would introduce a friend to another friend. Introduce people to our Savior. Remember, he is our friend. And try to have some kind of literature or tracts or books or something to leave with people so that they can contact you. If they're unsaved, they want to, you want to be able to contact them, they want to be able to contact you. And maybe you can bring them to your church. Determine which age group you want to reach. Now, this is important. Most people say, well, I want to reach everybody. Well, you're not going to reach everybody if you're just starting out. You have to reach out to the people that you identify with. Now, if you're ministering to seniors, forget about rap music or rock music. 
but hymns and inspirational songs, that's what's going to work. With teenagers, you want to do rap, rock, hip-hop, R&B, pop, but you don't want to do hymns because they have no idea what hymns are about. Hymns do not connect with unsaved teenagers. Now, with preteens, do whatever is popular. And with children, totally fun music. You've got to have fun. Kids just want to have fun. When they see that you are just a regular person, you can identify with them, you will win their influence, and you can bring them to Christ. And millennials, whatever you can get away with, go ahead and share that with them. The goal is to create an environment for God to work in their lives. Now, you're going to need a promotional package, and what's popular nowadays is what they call the EPK, an electronic press kit. And what that is is something that's going to have some information about you. It's going to be a video of you uh, performing or something like that so people can see what you look like and hear what you sound like and see how you can connect with people who are listening to you. That's going to be very important, an electronic press kit have some excellent photos and videos, and they don't have to be super professional, but they need to be clean. The video needs to be clean. The audio needs to be clean. Present something that's going to represent you well. Include endorsements from your pastor or noteworthy people who believe in you. If you have any newspaper write-ups or magazine articles, include those in your promo package. Have business cards with an email address, and if you have a website, put your web address on there. Have your phone numbers on there. Establish a social media presence. Now, try to get on Facebook or Instagram, Twitter, or Clubhouse, or Parlor, or whichever one of those is going to work for you, but that's very important. And put together that press release, something about yourself that you would want people to say about you on the radio or television. Solicit people who believe in you to help you. Those will be friends and church buddies and relatives. Delegate responsibilities. Make them feel a part of your ministry. Always solicit prayers. You're going to need people on your side or in your camp who will pray for you diligently. And set a range of mobility. I said that once before. Uh, establish how far are you going to go away from home so that you can be back to your regular job on time and ready to work? You need to set up your own business. Have your own ministry bank account. And don't mix your business with your personal accounts. Have a business phone or add a business number to your phone. And set up a place in your home for your business. That can be a tax exemption, your the part of your house where you do your business. And apply for a tax ID number. That's optional. That's uh, something you will want to do down the road. But uh, be thinking about that. Count up the costs. Will your ministry affect your family? Talk it over with your family. Talk it over with your children. Because this might mean sometimes you'll be away from them on special events or special days or holidays or things like that. How will your ministry affect your job? Uh, you need to be able to give 100% to your ministry and also 100% to your job. How will your ministry affect your bank account? You should not be using a whole lot of personal funds to support your ministry. Read Luke chapter 10, how Yeshua, how Jesus sent out the 70, and he sent them out and he let them know that the people that they minister to should be able to support what you do. How will your ministry affect your church? Is your church depending on you to be there every Sunday or every weekend? Find out from your church leaders how your personal ministry will affect you. I remember when I first started out in ministry, my pastor, he supported me, but he always wanted me to be at our church on special events. When certain ministries would come to our church, he wanted to put the best foot forward. How will your ministry affect your church? 
Does your church depend on you to be there on special occasions? Daily devotional. Learn how to minister to God and he will teach you how to minister to his people. Set up a personal time of devotion. Set up a time to pray with your team. If you have a team, set up a time to pray with them and get quality equipment. You are only as good as your you are only as good as your equipment will allow you to be. Be bold, be strong, and be blessed. Once again, I'm Dr. Ron Canoli. I gave you a quick overview of things that you need to organize before you start your music ministry. I do personal counseling and personal mentoring. I have mentored many singers and musicians over these 42 years that I have been in ministry. And if you need and can afford mentoring and you want to invest in your ministry, I can help you. And I am willing to help you by Zoom. I can come where you are. You can come where I am. But I'm willing to help you get started in your ministry. My information is there on the screen. God bless you. Contact me. I'll be glad to help you. God bless you.